Yes.
Gee, it looks like it's a struggle for Humanville out there.
So it's 2.10, the 8.10. So a dark old day is Cassidy. He can't mark it. He's been a corner. Tenick has been a very prolific player. Now the ball's moved on to Johns. Johns hands it off through the middle of the ground. They've been really through this middle here. Now McIndoo. There's a man calling out on the far side, Elliot. And we do have the numbers wrong. We haven't got a few officials. A lot of changes today. 
for both sides. Both sides are losing quite a few of the better players as the ball's moved out the half forward, but that's been the case. It's Ryan Miller who's battling one of the best ons for the Blues today. And he quickly moves the ball laterally across the far side. Looks for Miller. Nearly turning it over. Tackle low. Joseph Miller in there. And the umpire will come in and just release the ball. So two goals, 10, 22 to 8. I should say 10, 8, 68 in a dark day. And no doubt Nick Dole will be very disappointed with the effort here from the Lions today. Now it goes forward. Denny here with a handball over the top. Doesn't go too far. Now's a quick short kick. McAdoo runs inside it and underneath the ball. Just hasn't had a lot of good delivery. Now it's moved out to Hild. Hild knocks it on. A lot of mud just in front of us here. It's a little tug of the jump though. Unfortunately, Golding just reaching down his right hand there. And James, James. Now, just see how wet it is because James slipping onto his love, left. Love the muddy ground. <laughs> well, we love the muddy ground if the game's a little close as the ball's turned over. It's, now, it's still in front of us here. You know, we're trying to build again. That's not a bad kick. This is where they've turned the ball over constantly. Nearly oh. Mark taken by Elliott. Now, a man running off half back was Miller. Miller to heel, heel to half forward. Punch over the top by Blackburn. He goes forward again. Looks like it might be just held up. A couple extra players coming into that one, including Schenk, who's had a bit of a dark old day for the Lions, one of their more important players throughout the season. And he's been pretty poor today. So has it been lack of effort or execution for the uh, Lions? It's only effort's been OK. Execution has been actually extraordinarily poor. They've turned the ball over constantly pretty much from the get-go. And some of their decisions, I reckon, has been about Martin Duffy has been about seven or eight smothers with the ball on the half forward line as Hillenville were bringing it forward. They're just constantly just kicking into the man in the mark. So certainly the feet are slipping here a little bit. The ground is extremely heavy. Went out to it earlier. It's not a ground that would be enjoyed as Tenick, the former Richmond, uh, Richmond ladies, had a good game. And there's another smother. So extraordinary. There's a kick on goal, but just cutting that one off Blackburn's right foot. And they'll release here for. Just a few moments out of the line. So they're just on the grandstand wing. There's a lead coming up by McIntyre. He just gets on the end of it. Turns. He's nearly just in a bit of a wet patch there. He's got to kick to the 45. Nearly turned over. Contest on half forward for the Lions. Linda's fine with the numbers around there. How? Good tackle late. Now climbing is Shank. But unfortunately, Shank just maybe a little injured at the moment. He's just Leaning down into that one. Hield had a bit of the ball today. There's a little hold on Cassidy. Spinning out of the tackle. Going to his knees. Handballs. Now is that Roberts in the pocket? Roberts just missing to the inside for a minor score. So 2-10. 10-9. Now it's clear that there's three human players, but there's two lines further afield. Just needs to get one kick. And here's an example of a scrubby kick. It's just into Ali. Ali handles. We'll get it back here, Ali. It's going to be quick here. Just gets his kick away into half forward. Good contest there. Several players lurch onto that one. Miller to his knees. Now passed it is Ali. Once again, turning it over. And he's probably given away a free kick, surely. Martin Duffy, that's in the back. In the back. Definitely in the back. Hill pops it over the top. It's a clever handball. Now just in front of us here. Just on top of the Duff Mobile, number 88. We don't have his number. It's a very high number. Number 88, not in the program. And that ball's held up just in front of us. Now, as the last one in there is. Number 17 just getting off half back. Uh, just, a comment, just a comment on the ground condition. It's obviously muddy, and we're so used to seeing perfect grounds. Personally, I love it down here. I, I'd, I'd love to see the ground stay as it is. Uh, you know, save the money, put it in the hospitals. The let footy be played in the traditional way on a real mud patch down here yeah, in Hillville. Well, it certainly is muddy. There is another goal to the Blues. Wonderful running back. We'll just try and get a look on who that might have been. Oh, it was Cassidy. It looks like it was Cassidy in the end. So an excellent goal for the Blues. And they extend their lead. And they will be extending their position. It was Chris Harper just running on the side. The one I was trying to pick up, number 41. And that grandstand on the far side of the ground away from the commentary position here. People huddle now as the sun's gone down. 
It's going to get cold soon, Duffy. Have you got some uh, warmer clothes on, mate? We're on top of the Duffmobile. We're about two metres up. We're in a precarious position. There's no health and safety. We're just doing it for the love of it here on the map. Climbing up was War. He's now running in the ruck for Huonville. And it's just going to be held up there. It's just Adams lying on top of that one. In fact, he's going to get a free kick. So just defensive side of the middle of the ground. Goes short. Trying to build again, Hugh. Kicks it just a half forward. Cassie's a little slow off the mark then. He's still somehow going to get it. It's a good tackle leg. Quick releasing handle out. Jane. He gets a handle for the forward. Hugh now. Now the umpire's playing a whistle here. A little bit of a hole just off the ball. So I think it's going to be a free kick. And Cassidy sometimes does tend to give away a few free kicks. Now Shank's all by himself. Shank needs to play on because this is where they've got McAdoo now on a lead all by himself. He'll now get onto the end of that one. Tennant now coming in a little late. He's got a mate of his running past in Lovell. Lovell's kick is solid to the middle. Handles now. McAdoo again. Runs to half forward. Kicks to the pocket. Good contest. Trying to reach into that as Barnett. Now goes to ground. Tackle low. Hands in there as Baker. Now the umpire said holding the jumper. And Hewinville now have a chance to go for. They are two goals 10 versus 11-9. It is substantial. Alley. Too far out to score. He's around about 55 metres. And it certainly is a difficult ground to kick goals on. He's going to go short here, Alley. Is it a good kick? Nearly a wonderful kick. It was Miller just cutting that one off. Now he goes back to his knees. Tries to grab the footy. Tries to grab the jumper. Rushing through was Baker. And now Scrubby release. It might not be for long. Looks like it's Elliot running out there. Dennehy. He moves on to it. He's laid tackle. Nearly without the ball. Lots of players. It's a long way from us without a monitor. Just standing on top of the Duffmobile here. Trying to get a eye. There's a swinging shot and goal into the square. That is a goal for the Lions. And maybe consolation effort from there. And they'll get their third. So the third goal on the board for the Lions. Ward in the ruck. One of them just a free kick, so that he'll, he'll, he'll get the free kick, although he did actually point the other direction, Empire. And he's going to get to clear it out. And Dennehy was all by himself. And suddenly he's kicked a, a one on three, but a good mark by Godfrey. He's been a try, and Gennady is still here. Now there's a lead just into the forward pocket. It's a good lead. And a good kick. Marked by Ali. Ali goes short again, closer, around about 30 metres out. And look at that tumble. That was entertaining. Very entertaining, wasn't oh, it? That's actually Ali down there. He's got a bit of mud on his jumper. He looks a little sore. It was a wonderful salto, is what it's called in the gymnastic world. And he's going to have a shot in what is a very difficult pocket to kick sausage rolls here. It's the scoreboard wing. Alley now, tight in the boundary, around 35, 40 out. Kicks it right to the top. There's a bunch of players rising into that one. Godfrey nearly going on to it. Now there's a stacks on around that. And the umpire's only got one thing that he can do, and that is come and take the footy and give him a break for a little while. So I reckon Hulmville probably want this game to end so they can hit the showers first. It's probably one more of the archaic dugouts here where they had their showers. A big smother, and it's push through for a behind so 14 scoring shots to 20 it's probably a bit of an indication it doesn't feel like a seven or eight goal lead general play it's been pretty even but just decision making today is it's the half four the play big tackle off the ground drag his opponent that's a good call by the umpire so Linda's far now at half back and They'll extend their lead early in the day. Claremont were getting flogged. But I think that game might be a little bit close as that's knocked over the boundary line. Just in front of the, the fans down there. No fire over at the moment. Enjoying a cold beer. They've got their gloves on. It's gone from 15 to about 7 degrees in the space of 5 minutes as soon as the, the sun goes down over the hills behind Ranelagh. All right, that looks like Godfrey. Handles in board, trying to find Dennehy. He's been well hung today. He's only had a couple of shots 
on goal as well. And there is the funds of the fans there just in front of the camber. One of the better viewing spots. At least half a metre up just to give him a little bit of elevation. Now there's a man in the middle of the ground has decided he's not going to go to anyone and kick it to the only bit of vacant space. Now it's in the hands of Blackburn. Half forward again. Clever picked up the dangerous Tom Roberts. Now he's tackled. Coming through as Elliot. Quick handball on by James. Now sloppy kickers. Feel like the sting has just gone out of this game. Tenick quickly gets on his boot. That's a good decision from Tenick. Into the pocket. And a fantastic mark taken by Blackburn, I think. He'll just turn around and give us a look. He's right behind us here in the Duff commentary position. There's Blackburn. He'll be kicking from around about 45 metres. As there's a few fans have already left the ground. Indication that the Hillenville fans want to get home. Maybe get the fire lit. Maybe they've head down to the local local pub. He may be down to Willie Smith. It's Blackburn. He's hit that well. It's staying left. It stayed just enough. He pumps his right fist. And his mates come over and celebrate. A couple of horns go off. And Linda's far now. Right on top, and it's out starting to be a bit of a percentage booster for them. Yeah, the only fan left on the ground. Contest again, Ward. Trying to pick that one up, just struggling to get his hands in. There's Lawler, who's always one of their better runners. He's just playing in the middle of the ground, although sometimes he does play off half back. But it's going to be another throw, just getting up last. Just on the edge there, ran. Ward tries to get his right hand to it. Tenick looks like he's just being held, Tenick, by Lovell. And Pryor just says, no action now. Now Lawler runs into a, a little bit of space, kicked it over his teammates. Head and a great defensive mark. Might be uh, Miller. So just released it. There's a bit of space here just on the grandstand wing. Players going in. And now Price scored out a free kick. It's going to go hit in the hands of Hewnville. So kick to the middle of the ground. It's not a bad one. Big climb up the top by Godfrey. Dennehy just goes past it. Needs to just run back in again, Dennehy. He's lacking a little bit of energy today. Trying to lay tackles Godfrey. Two Hewnville players going hard to try and root the ball out of the hands of the Lindisfarne defender. And no luck on that occasion. As the sun is just loving a last little bit of a gasp here before it just rolls down behind the hill. Looked like Ward was just held then. Dennehy slaps it onto his right boot. Gets it about 30 metres further forward. That one's just slipping over. Alley. Another good tackle laid. Running past. Hillville. Desperate try and squeeze another goal. Alley again. Dragged to the ground. Call a ball. Godfrey trying to play some pressure. Apply some pressure, I should say. Now it's just released for a little while. Still, wobbly kick. Not the best kick. Juggling. Can't mark it. Tight contest. It's around about 25 metres from goal. It's going to be held up. And an indication of the Lindisfarne today is that even when Hewnville have gone forward, they've probably had the ball as much in their forward line as Lindisfarne that their defenders have been able just to cut that down. Early, close to the boundary line. Slips over. And it goes out of bounds in the right forward pocket. So 3-11, 12-9, 81-29. <laughs> I think most people expected this game to be pretty close all day. Maybe Lindisfarne's slight favourites, but at home, you would expect this to be really close. Tenet handball is a clever kick through midair. Cassidy just has about a metre on his player. Gets it on to his favourite left boot. That's good play from Cassidy. Finds Blackbird. Blackbird runs around onto his right. Now there's only Newville defenders in line there. A good mark taken by Rawson. He plays on just across the face of the goal. This gets me perfect though. This is where Hewnville have turned the ball over constantly today. Trying to find a better player in space, but they've constantly kicked it to the ground or they've kicked it to the left or right of the players. And this should be a goal for Lindisfarne. Unfortunately, from another turnover. And it's just getting a little bit too difficult here for the Lions in their home turf. They haven't lost too many games down here over the last couple of years by this margin. They've had some close losses, but nothing like this. You good? Dennehy now. Short. 
tries to find Steele. He's still slow getting up. Now, Linda's fun, just with a few numbers, a lot of mud. Casty releases a handball a little wide. Just the ball is slightly mud on it. Players with plenty of mud on it. It's over the boundary line, left forward pocket. Just a percentage opportunity now for the Blues. They've got their little nose in front of Claremont. And it seems that maybe with this victory, and a big victory for Lindisfarne, just in the case, that might have been a high tackle. The umpire is just on the wrong side. It's The ball's just knocked out to James. Kick to around about 20 metres. Just out of position now, and it's gone through for a minor score. So Hewonville, long way home from here. Now they've got a, a bunch of teams chasing behind them. Hobart Signet, Dodgers Ferry, and also New Norfolk are now all within sniffing distance. They had a slender lead sort of on those teams. The double chances just so critical. The double-double chances it could be in the McIntyre system. For Lindisfarne could be even more important. They've managed to get top spot over Claremont. It seems like they're the only two teams that will finish 1-2. McIntyre system. McIntyre system, Martin Duffy. Yes, brought in there by whatever his first name. Let's call him Reginald McIntyre. Came up with the five. We've got a name. Give something a name for everything. And now Lindisfarne with another opportunity to extend their lead. So he would have patented further. that idea. Yeah, he's definitely patented it. The top five is Blackburn. Michael Blackburn now. He's already kicked one from this exactly same spot, Martin Duffy. Around about seven minutes ago. He's left forward pocket. He'll run, we think. There's, there's so many we can't actually see the lines, to around about 45. It's a Brown thumping approach. kick. And that Go. is another sausage roll for the farm. And they are having a lot of fun here in the mud at Newville. So 3-11, 4-10, 94 to 29. It's considerable. It's Blackburn. He just kicked that last goal. He's kicked two excellent goals from the left four pocket here. Well, on this occasion, it looks like Yonville should better get it out. Kick goes forward. Climbing high. That's nearly a free kick. Yeah, it looked like a free kick. I mean, Trifford there just giving that one away. Got a few numbers that are a little bit wrong, both in the program and also in the list that we have here. But we know number 23, though, is John's. And he's directly in front to respond straight away. And a little chip onto the green. He should be able to pop that one in. And here we go. And second goal for the last quarter. A little bit of a consolation. They moved to 4-11. 35. Well, that was always an easy kick on goal with a very short goal post down here at Hillville. Well, I did mention they're also crooked. They're not just short, they're crooked. We heard, from, a, we heard on the map a few it. weeks ago. Yeah, that's true. Look yeah, at that. a, little bit, a little bit crooked. We heard on the map a few weeks ago that the crookedest goalpost in southern Tasmania was actually Boyer Oval. They're also the shortest. Now, I think Yonville might be winning, certainly in the Southern Football League, in the crookedest and the shortest goalpost at right pocket in the southern end of the ground here at Yonville Recreation Ground. He's rather crooked as Lawler steams away. Just once again, he wasn't under pressure then. He just handled straight to nobody. Well, quickly kicked on by Johns. I think it's gone through. Yeah, just a minor score. So he's one of the, one of the few players up forward without the Mickey Paul. And that's a beautiful kick, and that looks like a free kick. Just giving that away. Just a little quick shove. So in this front, will they go through the middle? They will. Trying to find Joseph Miller. It's been really good off half-back. Constant performer. Now Miller kicks it to half-forward. Danahy gets his right hand, but then goes to the mud. Releasing handle. This is good play. Blackburn, I should say Hill, kicks it into that dangerous spot. It's a very dangerous spot because it's in the hands of another Lindisfarne Blues player. As we get a waft of the barbecue being cooked up here. We're on the westerly, I should say the easterly side of the ground. And Tom Roberts, who was in, could have done anything early in the day, he seemed like he could have kicked six or seven. He's had a few shots on goal. His set shots aren't quite as good as his snaps around the goal, but that's a nice set shot. It's bending left. 
but it hasn't been too far. The only result of the umpire sticking two fingers out to indicate another goal here to Lindisfarne. Uh, the sun has definitely set on Hillville. It's certainly set on the recreation ground as Ward reaches high. Lawler runs past. Now in the hands of Blackburn. I should say Rice, who at least Hill. He missed his up a few times. So commanding a dominant performance from maybe now the team which is stamping their authority to the best team in southern Tasmania. That's turned over. That was a horrible kick. We've seen a few of those today. It's under steel. He's now turned it over. Moving back through again. Godfrey will have to run. He can't get it. Just runs past that one. Joseph Miller was also in there. Now we've got players just on the, uh, the near side just to us. Not, not deciding not to it. It's Lindisfarne to the middle of the ground. It's kicked up to half forward. It's a good kick to a one on two. Just knocked his hands. I think that's Styles number two. Now it's knocked over top. Should be. Should be. It is all too easy for Lindisfarne as they're absolutely running away with this one. And another goal to the Blues. As they progress to 16 10, 106 to 4 12. 36. And at the start of today, we certainly weren't expecting a result like this. Johns. Lawler. He's been really great this last quarter, but pretty much nearly their best on. That's a really good mark by Baker. Baker quickly plays on. Kicks the ball out to half forward. Or I should say half back. Just missed. Linda's fine with the numbers. That's a good smeller. Yeah, it's coming through. Might have been shank. Calling out. Holding the ball. And they didn't get what they wanted. They haven't got what they wanted all day. In front of the Rodney Springer Banfield Memorial Stand. It's, uh, it's a fair name, isn't it? <laughs> and it's a great it, structure. It's a beautiful grandstand. It looks like it should be at a racetrack. It needs to be about another five metres a little closer to the action. There's a, and maybe a bit more tiered section now. There's a, a lot of hut guys just huddled around the can bar. They're in close just to keep warm. It's a beautiful day here in the valley as we came over the saddle this afternoon. But as it is in winter in southern Tassie, once the sun disappears, it's not as much fun as now... Hume will have a chance to kick their fifth goal for the game. The percentage is important for them. They can't go backwards too much either, Hewinville. Right forward pocket, left forward pocket. The umpire doing a little bit of work, but I think that has snuck through. I think that's Ali. He's certainly been a trier all day for the Lions. And just a few high fives and a lot of fun there. It's kind of going through the motions. It's like the last session before the school bell goes. You've had a tough day at school. You've been told off by the teacher several times and you're going to go home with a report card which has got given you, I reckon, an E at best. For Lindisfarne, I think Tony thinks it's a bit of a B- minus for them. They can certainly play better and they've got a lot of players that aren't in this team. And there is the noise which indicates the slug and bog of the recreation ground here at Hillville is over. And a huge win to the Blues. 16-10-106 to 5-12-42. More than 10 goals. It was a big win. Lindisfarne now launched their way towards finals. And they are now percentage plus in front of Claremont in a race for top spot.